Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are working on part of our zombie horde and when I say part I only mean 20 dudes so uh, lots and lots of zombies to play with here. Uh, you'll notice I've got a couple of these special little dudes here. I've got a couple of guys from the Hero Quest uh, piece there to chop off these massive, uh, <laughs> massive square bases which is hilarious. Did a custom banner uh, just so I have something that's kind of big and bold and uh, easy to look at. Uh, I've also got a little bit of an antique here. One of the first kind of metal zombies that uh, GW put out. So uh, really looking forward to getting the, uh, these guys painted up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick a couple of these guys and I'll be painting them through. And then I'll just kind of catch up on the, the zombies, uh, the rest of the horde later. But um, let's get going on these guys. So I'm going to prime them up and we'll get to it. All right, so we got these guys all primed up in Korax white, and now I'm going to start off by giving them a little bit of a coat of Nurgling green. Uh, the trick is going to be kind of shuffling these all up because obviously there's lots of similar uh, recurring parts. So, uh, but let's start off with the skin first, uh, and I'm just going to use a bit of uh, Nurgling green here, and I'm just going to go over all the fleshy bits. Okay, we can see now that we got the skin all sorted out and it's looking nice and gross already. Uh, we're going to start now with any of the leathery bits. We're going to use our base of Mornfang Brown. The idea here is to just get in and, uh, you know, just give it a little bit of extra color. I mean, the, the tendency might be to have a very drab army. So uh, I'm going to take Mornfang Brown now and go after anything that's leathery. So the bracers on the arms or the... Uh, boots. Now he's got a bit of a wrap around the boots there. So if I go with kind of a, a fuller, fuller boot on this guy here. So I'll just do anything that's got a leather kind of base to it. I'll do in the Mornfang Brown. Any bracers, any wristbands, uh, anything like that. Okay, now that we got all the leather done up in Mornfang Brown, we're gonna take on the challenge of the clothing. Now, some of the zombies are a little bit on the samey side. They, some of them have this, this cape, some of them have kind of the same pants and all that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to group together kind of elements that are similar. So if I have, for example, this guy with the cape and I have, if I grab another one here, I have another guy with a cape. Uh, what I'm going to do is kind of group all those capes together and make sure that they're a little bit on the, the different side. But uh, for now, the easiest way to kind of break these up is to take, say, our three colors of kind of brownish colors. We've got the Steel Legion Drab, we've got Carrick Stone, we've got Deathclaw Brown. And what I'm going to do is I'll take, say, for example, Steel Legion Drab, and I'll do the pants on one guy, the shirt on the other, and then I'll kind of pass the next one over. Then in Carrick Stone, I'll do the pants on the next guy, the shirt on the next one, if applicable, and so and so. So basically what I'm going to do is essentially shuffle up all the colors so that everyone's a little different. So if you do get some of the guys with kind of a samey, uh, a samey kind of uh, setup with the, the shirt or the pants or what have you. It's one of the coolest ways to kind of break things up and visually your eye will break it all up and they'll all seem like unique miniatures. So let's get started. So uh, I'm going to start off with Steel Legion Drab here. I'll give it a good shake and I'm going to do the pants of the first guy. So I'll just do the pants of the first guy. Now with the pants, there are some guys that have a little bit of kind of cloth wrapped around. Uh, I'm going to do that in Screaming Skull so we get that kind of linen effect. But for the most part here, I'm just going to work it all over. And with the pants done on the first guy, I'm now going to do the shirt on our second guy. Leaving that cape just kind of where he was. Leaving that cape nice and clean. We're going to use some red there. Tie the armies together a bit. Okay, and then we'll continue on with uh, Carrick Stone here. So just kind of the, the next flavor of brown. And we'll just do the shirt on this guy here or what's left of it. Okay, and once we've got that shirt all done up, I'll work my way around there. Then we'll do the pants on this guy, leaving that tabard. So I'm going to find any kind of the tabards or capes or anything like that. I'm going to end up doing in uh, in red, 
And again, leaving that little bit of kind of wrapped cloth there, that wrapped linen, I'll leave that uh, to be the kind of a linen-y bone color. And again, I'm just going to keep alternating through uh, as we go so that we've got kind of, you know, dark, light, and then, you know, the, the Deathclaw brown is going to be in that one there. And we'll just kind of alternate through. So the idea, again, is to randomize as much as humanly possible uh, the different setups for all these guys. So I'll continue on with that. All right, so we can see now that we've got everything all shuffled up nicely with the colors. You'll see that we've got our kind of khaki-colored Carrick Stone. You'll see that we've got our kind of orangey-ish uh, Deathclaw Brown here and there. And, of course, we've got our Steel Legion Drab for some of the darker areas as well. But it's still different from that Mornfang Brown uh, that used to make up our leather. So lots and lots of variety. So they all look kind of uniform, but they're not wearing uniform. So pretty solid. Now, uh, while I'm here with my Steel Legion Drab, I'm now going to go after all of the the wooden bits. So all the handles, basically, on all of the weapons. Um, of course, there's a couple guys holding some uh, fell branches here as well. So all I'm going to do now is just uh, base coat all of our um, all of our wood stuff in this Steel Legion Drab. Okay, now that we've got the wood all done uh, for our zombies here, uh, the next thing we're going to move on to is the metallics, which is our lead belcher. And that's going to be anything metal. Now, these guys aren't going to have anything good. Uh, the only thing that we're going to do in any color other than silver uh, for metallics is going to be the bells. So let's start working on things like the chains. Kind of work our way around uh, with the chains here. Okay, and then I'll finish those off. And then while we're working on the chains, the next thing we can do is our, of course, all the weapon heads. You know, those will all get uh, done up in lead belcher as well. Not that too thick, a little bit of extra water on there. All right. And then I'll finish those. And of course, little things like the details on like the tambourine here. So basically going over top of the outer edge here. And of course on the other side, we're going to have to be super careful, but we'll get in amongst the face here, that stretched out face, and find all the spots where the skin doesn't cover that tambourine. All right, oh, in addition to that as well, we've got some jewelry on some of them. Now, whether it's uh, from cuffs or binds, or just it was jewelry on the person before, uh, you'll see them on some of the arms here, and I'm just going to go over those as well. Again, they don't deserve any kind of good goldy stuff. They won't be buried in the best. It'll be looted off them far before that. All right, and finally, the only thing that's going to be worthy of any kind of gold or copper from these guys is going to be these these bells. So um, I'm just going to do that in uh, Hashut Copper and just a nice quick coat on those bells there. All right, we are working our way to the end of the base coating process, which of course is the longest and most arduous, but uh, we're going to do Mephist and Red now on all of our guys, and we're going to do that wherever there is guts or a tabard or a cape. Um, now obviously the guts is the easy one. Uh, that makes the most kind of sense. And the guts are going to be just kind of done up in red here. Now when we wash this, of course, it'll darken down all the recesses, which will be great and do to do to do, do now the capes and the tabards are just going to be a coloring thing so we're just going to make sure that we kind of match the rest of our undead army so i'm going to do the tabards and of course let's make sure i get the belt in there i'm gonna have to touch up a little bit in here but not too bad so i'll do the tabards in there and then of course any of the capes that we get i'm just going to go in here and do up all of our capes so capes tabards gross guts and um, you can also if you want just kind of edge where the bone meets the flesh if you want a little bit 
of red, but I wouldn't do too much because it would look kind of overkill. But if you want kind of a fresh thing. Now, if you want to do the zombies uh, eating dudes and you want kind of blood all over the ma uh, over the face and the and the chest and all their clothes and everything like that, uh, we're going to use Blood for the Blood God later, that really awesome technical paint that looks like wet blood, after we've clear-coated the miniatures and all that. So don't stress out too much about that. But uh, we'll base the guts and we'll base the capes and we'll base the tabards. Okay, and our second last step now is going to be taking Screaming Skull and we're going to use it for a whole bunch of different things. So first off, any exposed bone is going to be in this Screaming Skull. So I'll do, you know, the, the base of this uh, leg here, which is great. I'll do the exposed bone on the legs. And, of course, if we have any arms, we'll do the exposed bone on that. So we'll do exposed bone on the arm here. So basically any of the bone parts will do that. Uh, next up is going to be any of the linens. So uh, this wrapped linen around the leg, we'll do all of these. Work our way around. Do, 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 do. And then, of course, so we've got the bones. We and then, of course, we'll look for the ropes as well. So, uh, some of the zombies have ropes around their waist. So instead of going with that Mornfang brown, I'm just going to do the uh, the bone color, the screaming skull color, uh, on the rope. Edge that all around, and then we'll also do it on any rope that we have. So on this guy here we'll make sure that the, the crazy face tambourine all the rope is done as well. Okay so we're on to the last step just before the wash and uh, what I'm going to do is I actually group together all of our guys and there's lots of sameness going on. You'll see these three guys have the same head, obviously the same beard. Uh, these six at the back have the same head so uh, again same hairstyle that goes on there. These ones have the buns, yada yada yada. So anybody that's got hair, obviously some of them don't and that's that's totally cool. A little more streamlined in the uh, hunting down of the uh, still alive ones there. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take just three basic colors, kind of using the same color palette. I've got Steel Legion Drab, I've got Carrick Stone, and I've got the Death Claw Brown. And I'm going to alternate each one. So when I've got the matching heads, I'll do one in Steel Legion Drab, one in Carrick Stone, one in Death Claw Brown, and then I'll leave the odd one here and there, just the white, and it'll wash down to like a very light gray. So I'll just take the initial part of these grouped head guys, and I'm gonna work through just alternating them all through, kind of shuffling up the color scheme. Okay, so this is an example here. Um, I've got four people. Now the, the fourth one, I'm just going to leave white, but uh, I'll do the Steel Legion drab on the first set of hair there, giving us our kind of darker brown type of hair. Just making sure I stay kind of within the grain here. Then I'll do Carrick Stone on my second guy here. Then on my third zombie I'm going to use Deathclaw Brown. And then I'll leave the white for my fourth one, giving them that gray hair once we wash it. So essentially, just shuffling the different hair colors to all the different zombies so that it gives us this different kind of look to each of them so it doesn't look all samey and uniform. All right, so I'll continue on with the rest of the guys and we'll finish off the bases. Obviously, we'll prep those for wash as well and we'll be right back for the wash step. Okay, we've got ourselves a schwack, a mess, a horde, a murder, a an army of zombies here marching forward. Uh, we've mixed up all the clothes, which is awesome. Mixed up the colors of hair on similar heads. We've gone and, well, kind of based everything so that it's all ready to go. And then now it's time to wash. So I'm going to use my infamous cheater wash, and this is going to be 50% floor wax, which 
is awesome. Makes everything flow really, really nicely. And then 25% Agrax Earthshade, 25% Null Oil, and that is it. And off we go. You can see that the floor wax really kind of allows it to flow in there to all the nooks and crannies, bringing out all the all the threading and all of that. Awesome. Make sure it doesn't pull up too much because it will plug up our detail. And just fast and furious, we'll be doing this and all the bases. Okay, the hoard is really coming together now. So with that wash, obviously it's brought out all that detail, which is fantastic, looking really, really strong. So our next step now, I'm gonna clear some of these away and we're going to work on brightening up our colors. Okay, so we got those guys cleared away and now we're going to go back over our major highlights of our Nurgling Green, so our skin color, the kind of rotten flesh tone here. Now I wanna keep them somewhat clean, but I'm just going to go over and just pick out some of the details. So uh, anything just kind of on the higher ends of the bumps of like say the stomach or the shoulders. Again, just picking out the major highlights here, you know, across the chest, especially the head. And wherever there's any kind of, you know, larger surface, I'm just going to streak it a little bit. And we're still gonna come up and highlight this a little bit later on as well. So picking out the nose, the frame of the face, kind of the high points on all the muscles the fingers, even just going sideways across the ribs here, super gentle-like. All right, so I'll continue on with this, doing all the majors of the skin tone. Okay, they're looking super dark and broody and moody and zombie-ish, awesome. Uh, now I wanna brighten up the skin a little bit more, and I know this kinda goes counter to what a lot of people think. They like the really kinda dirty looking zombies, and I think that's awesome. Uh, however, I like them to pop against the table still and not get lost, so I'm going to do Screaming Skull and I'm going to do a dry brush, and that dry brush is going to be super, super, super light. So I'm gonna put a little bit of paint on a brush, wipe it off so there's nothing left, and when I go in and do the dry brush, I'm literally just gonna be going top down and just doing just like a touch. And on the muscles and all that, and just the lightest dry brush that ever was on the flesh. So this way I get to keep a lot of the, the color to it but there's like next to nothing on this brush now. So I dropped the brush. And I'm just giving it just an extra little bit of highlight. So really next to nothing of a dry brush. And it gives it that rougher kind of texture. See, normally I don't like dry brushes because I think uh, you know it gives them a very rough looking texture. But with these guys, just, just a touch of the dry brush uh, gives them a nice rough skin, rotted out texture. Love it, awesome. Okay, and then continuing along again with our Screaming Skull, if uh, we have any exposed bone or any of the wraps, we'll do the uh, we'll do the bone, of course. We'll do that nice and bright so it contrasts out against that nice light dry brush we did on the skin. And then, of course, if there's any uh, bone on the legs here, we've got a couple exposed bones on the legs. We'll do just the kneecaps and just trace over the major highlights of the bone, of course. Give it that nice kind of organic look to it. Awesome. And then uh, after that, one last thing, we'll do any of the wraps. So we'll be a little bit careful, but just, just doing the major highlights. So we don't have to be kind of doing everything. We just have to just pick up on the major, the major edge elements just to give that visual cue that there are wraps there. All right, I'll continue on with all of these guys. Beautiful. Awesome. Now, anything that is uh, leather, so our armbands, our, our arm guards here, and our boots, we're going to go back over again with Morn Fang Brown. And again, we're just going to be going over the majors, so we're going to leave a lot of that shading still in place. We're not going to do any edge highlighting on this because we still want it to be kind of rough, kind of gruesome. So just going over the majors, just adding in just a little bit of color uh, going back over here. So just adding just a little bit of that color back and uh, you can see it comes out really quite nicely. And of course the boots as well. 
All right, so now that we got the Mornfang Brown done up on all the leather bits, the boots, the uh, the bracers, all of that, now what we're going to do is we're just going to go back over the major highlights of all of the clothing. So anything that was Deathclaw Brown is going to get a major highlight of Deathclaw Brown. Anything that had a major highlight of Steel Legion Drab or Carrick Stone will get those back just highlighted back on there as well. We're not going to be doing a whole lot of edge highlighting because we want to tone down the sharpness, but we don't want to tone down the color. So I'll start with Deathclaw Brown and anything that was Deathclaw Brown previously, I'm just going to use, uh, do a bit of a major highlight here. So on our friend's pants, we're just going to pick out all the stuff that was kind of highlighted before. So I'm making sure that we leave all that tonal range of shade in there. And then, so I'll work my way around doing all of that. Uh, then anything that was, say on this guy, Carrick Stone, and I would just kind of sweep through all of them doing the same thing. So now anything that was Carrick Stone, funny enough, is going to get a highlight of Carrick Stone. Now with this one here, uh, because Carrick Stone's a little bit lighter, we're going to do streaks. So I'm gonna pick out where the highlights would be, almost like I'm edge highlighting it back with its own color and just do a little bit of a streaky down kind of motion towards the edge. So it still looks dirty, but you still get lots and lots of, of color variation in there from the wash. Okay, and then finally, I'll do the same with the Steel Legion Drab. Close this up. So finally, I'll do the same with the Steel Legion Drab. And anything that was Steel Legion Drab before, clothing-wise anyway, uh, again, I'll do the exact same thing. So this is the similar type shirt, but any of the shirt or cloths or fabrics, we're just gonna highlight kind of near the bottom, kind of a streaky down, just right near the edges. And there we go, so we'll get a whole pop of color. Okay, I'll continue on with this, with all three colors, and we'll be right back. Awesome, so now that we've got all the clothes all finished up now, we're going to punch up the red in a big major way. So uh, one of the ways we're going to do that, of course, is we're going to use back over our, uh, our Mephiston red before. Now that it's washed, we're going to go back over it again with this, and then we're going to apply a final highlight to it as well. Uh, it's going to be the only color that we're really, really going to bring up bright. Uh, we want to kind of fight against that drabness of the, the greens and browns a little bit here. So we'll start off with the tabards. Now, obviously it's super simple. We're just going to go over the major highlights of each of the tabards, kind of front and back. Then we'll work on, do, 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 put him over there. Uh, then we'll work on the guts, which of course is the cool, gruesome part of this whole thing. And what we're going to do is just make sure that we get over the majors, but we want it nice and bright, but we want to leave lots of that low light or that uh, wash in there to give it lots of kind of gruesome depth that looks like it's coming deep from within the guy. Now if we have any spots on the skull we might want to touch those up as well, look a little bloody which is nice. And then of course we're going to go over any of our existing capes. So just going over the majors of this guy and leaving all that recess shading in there. Beautiful. Okay, now we're going to go after all those red highlights again using the same three boys here. Uh, only this time we're going to use Wild Rider Red and we're just going to highlight the very, very edges to make that little bit of pop here of our tabards. And do, 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 do. finish this guy off back here. Uh, so we'll do be doing our tabards and of course all the other guts and everything uh, on the capes. We're going to do a very similar type of thing. We'll do the edge highlight uh, just to make it pop. But in addition to that, as we get down to the bottom, we'll just do some striations uh, just like this, just to kind of make it look a little ratty, a little worn, but still get that nice red pop on all the major highlights. And up his front here as well, just kind of picking out the edges of the knot and all of that. Perfect because obviously we're looking at these from above, so we want that highlight to be down below. It gives us a little bit of extra pop. And then my favorite part, of course, back to the guts again. And on the guts, we're going to just do uh, just little bits of highlight, just on the extreme highlight parts, or so the kind of the top parts. So just kind of an extreme highlight on there, and you'll see that it gets lots of depth and looks really, really good. Okay, continuing on with the rest of the models here.
All right, it's looking really, really good. So I'll just carry these off to the rest of the guys. Okay, we're onto the home stretch now, and we're going to be working on the metallics, and I'm going to do all of the silvers in Runefang Steel, and do the gold bells in Fulgurite Copper. So, start off with the Runefang Steel, and uh, yeah, loving the way these guys are turning out. We're getting lots of pop on the reds, which is great, uh, and of course we get pop on the metallics as well. So, for the blades and such, I'm just going to do just an edge highlight, maybe a little bit of a kind of a liney chipped kind of highlight on the weapon tips here and then I want to make sure that in addition to that I'll finish that off in a sec in addition to that I get all of the chains uh, any of the rings on the jewelry anything like that just going over top super super fast super simple just getting all that in there to get a little bit of that depth back of course uh, and then uh, we'll move on to the actual bells here so so what we're gonna do for the bells is we'll do the fulgurite copper give it a good shake here and um, I don't want it to be too bright I just want it with a little bit of a just a little bit of a highlight here so to keep it kind of looking dirty I'm just going to streak in that highlight there just like that, just to give it a little bit more of that yellowy back after the wash. Give it that nice, kind of sickly, bronzy look to it. All right. Okay, so now all we have left to do is uh, the eyes for the actual bodies of the zombies themselves. And I'm going to use White Scar, and I'm going to pick any of the uh, one eye or two eye models with their eyes kind of wide open like this. And I'm just gonna touch in a little bit of white scar just to give them those kind of glaring eyes. And I'll do the same for any of the guys with one eye as well. Now, just kind of touch it in there just so you have the one kind of cloudy eyeball sitting right there. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my white scar and just off to the side of the palette, I'm gonna take as much as I can off the, the brush and I'm just gonna pick out the teeth of our zombies here. So we can do that with some of these guys just by dragging it across and just picking out the teeth to give them that kind of ominous bitey look. Okay, so fast forward a few steps here. Uh, we've got the basing all finished up. So we finished off the highlights on the basing. We got the grass in, all of that. And then did a clear coat over all the miniatures with purity seal. And that just locked in all the details and matted down the washes. Now, the last step, normally I'll do the purity seal and all that at the end. But the last step I want to do is the blood for the blood god. Uh, and I would like to do that on our guys. Now it's got a high gloss element to it and I wanted that to be the only gloss on the model. So I'm just gonna give it a bit of a shake here and we're going to apply it in two ways. The first way, let's load it up on the brush here. The first way is going to be if we have anybody with kind of a lighter shirt or something like that. And again, we want to do this kind of sparingly. I'm just going to go in and dab a bit kind of on his, uh, on his face, his mouth, and then I'm gonna dab a bit on his shirt uh, as well and just kind of do somewhat of a ran, random kind of disbursement of that. All right, so we'll, we'll have them face deep in the goop there, which is awesome. And then I'll take any of the, some of the weapons here and I'll do uh, the, the, the blood strikes, the arterial strikes on the, on the ax here. So I'm just going to take that same brush and I'm just gonna drag it up. And now of course, because I've got a really ratty brush here, I've got the ability to kind of do it up in streaks. So it looks pretty solid, all things being equal. So I'll just finish that up on the other side. And you can actually build this up if you wanna hit with a couple layers and all that. Uh, you can actually build it up and get chunks of gore and all that those elements on there as well. So I'm gonna work my way through the guys. Now obviously it's something you wanna use sparingly. Uh, you don't wanna have you know goop and blood everywhere, as gory as it would be. Uh, it might be a little distracting from the actual colors. So I'll probably find some kind of blood feature on every second person in that squad of 20. Okay, so I might have lied. I think instead of going with half of the guys for Blood for the Blood God, I went for about two thirds. Uh, the effect is just unreal. I mean, I love 
this technical paint is just unreal. So we can get, if you'd like to pick up on this here, like the gloss and the semi-transparency and the way it looks like it's kind of clotting and collecting in corners. Like Blood for the Blood God is an unreal paint. Uh, you know, I had goopy hands and all that. And because, of course, I did the clear coat before, that uh, purity seal kind of tamped down all the shine. Now the shine really pops with the with the Blood for the Blood God. So, yeah, really loving the way these guys turned out. They look gruesome and gory and, uh, well, kind of terrifying, to be honest. So uh, really happy to get these guys on the field. The challenge now is going to be doing the next 20 of them, and then I'll have my big blob of zombies. I'll also be doing a corpse cart to follow up as well. So really, really cool, really exciting. Excited. looking forward to seeing these guys on the table so uh, that draws us to the end of this video so if you liked it uh, obviously hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already we're going to be doing lots more obviously painting tutorials a lot of battle reports coming up which is great and um, I hope you, you know the video is of value to you guys and we'll see you in the next video